everybody, this is uh, Data Pioneer from the Linux Unix Tech Channel coming at you again today. And today I'm going to do a full system setup and review of an operating system that I've been looking at. It's called MX19 Linux. It is based on Debian. So let's go ahead. I'm out on distrowatch.com right now. And let me just come bring up uh, MX Linux from the list. And... Um, LM, MX, here we go, MX Linux, and let's take a look at it. So this is MX Linux, and we're up to version 19 right now. Um, it is uh, a Debian stable base uh, operating system, uh, distro of Linux. Its origin is uh, Greece and the United States. Um, it is in the i686, x86, 64 architecture. Uh, I'm going to be running it in the x64 today. Uh, in uh, VirtualBox 6.0 Manager. The desktop is XFCE, very lightweight, and so we shouldn't be pulling a lot of memory when we get this thing up and running. It is uh, set up for or available for the desktop uh, from RAM and live media as well, okay? Uh, and it's apparently a pretty popular uh, operating system here uh, from the aspect or from the standpoint of DistroWatch. In fact, it is number one. Uh, MX Linux. Now that doesn't necessarily mean it's the most popular operating system for Linux or distro for Linux in, in the world or in the United States for that matter, but um, that's how uh, DistroWatch ranks it. Here's a link to the homepage, mxlinux.org. I'll put a link out to um, for this to the uh, under the video uh, on the channel so that you have it um, and you don't have to go looking for it. Here you've got a user form available as well, and you've got documentation, screenshots, etc., etc. So uh, I'm looking forward to uh, getting into MX Linux, and so if you'll come along with me, um, together we'll take a look at MX19 Linux. Uh, and so let's get into it. Okay, I'm in my VirtualBox 6.0 manager, and we'll hit uh, Machine and New and go ahead and set up this MX19. So I'm going to type in MX19 uh, Linux and uh, I'm going to go ahead and base this on Debian Linux since it is Debian Linux 64-bit. Um, I'm going to give this thing uh, my usual 4096 megabytes or 4 gigs of RAM and let's click Create and then uh, let's go ahead and give this, um, oh let me see probably give this thing 50 gigs of uh, VDI dynamically allocated hard drive space. Click Create. Let me go up to the uh, Settings button here and want to uh, click, click on System, untick Floppy, select Hard Disk and move it up the boot order. Click Display and give this 128 megabytes of uh, video RAM. I want to switch this to VBox VGA so it will come up to 10, 1920 by 1080. Click storage and empty and click on the virtual hard disk and then select the download that I did for MX19 X64 ISO and click open. Uh, for audio, I'll leave it at the default. Uh, for network, I'll change this to a bridged network adapter and then USB 3.0 is my normal. Click OK. And then uh, go ahead and uh, click settings again. I want to change something here. Change this to underscore uh, x64. And then click OK here. And we're ready to launch this thing. So let's go ahead and launch the uh, ISO. So we'll click start. And then as usual, I will go ahead and select view and full screen mode. And when it comes up, let me go ahead and uh, hit the enter key here. Uh, to go ahead and launch this thing. And uh, so it should be coming up here shortly. Uh, MX19 is looks like it's going to be a nice operating system. Uh, get this and it'll eventually come to a stable background. Uh, not sure why it's doing this, but um, it's a virtual box. But if we get a 1920 by 1080, I don't really care. Uh, and we shall get that momentarily here. All right, so there we go. Let's click uh, 
close here, I think. We want to quit this application, I believe. I don't think there's anything we want to look at here. See the in the upper right-hand corner, we've got 0536, Wednesday, November 20th. Uh, let's double-click the installer, and let's get the installer going. Uh, I guess I could have chosen the option to install directly and not gone into the live version here, but that's okay. All right, so I'm going to select Next, and I'm going to use the SDA 50 gig hard disk auto install using the entire disk. I am not going to encrypt, so I'm going to click Next. It's okay to format, yes, and it's going to start its formatting process, installing Grub for Linux and Windows uh, in the MBR location. So I'm going to click Next here. Um, make sure I've got 50 gig hard drive, yeah. And so uh, I will select the next here shortly, and then we'll move on into setting up the rest of, of this. All right, so the computer name, I'm going to give it the name of MX19 um, or 19 uh, VM. Computer domain, I'm going to call it MX19.landlocal.com. Use a Samba server workgroup. Uh, click Next, and um, let's see, United States, Time Zone, America, New York is good. Format is good. Click Next. Um, for the default user account, I'm going to use Data Pioneer. For the default user password, I'm going to put that in. And then I'm going to confirm it. And then for root password, I'm going to give it a root password. And then I'm going to click Confirm on that and re-enter it. Alright, and then I'm going to click Next, and uh, here's some tips, um, that's fine. At some point I'm going to go ahead and stop the video and come back when this is completed. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, restart the uh, distro now that we've got it installed. And um, So it's coming up, I'm going to hit the Enter key here, it's on the hard drive now. And um, let's get this thing going. Looking forward to MX19, see what's there, what's new. It's Like I said, it's based on Debian uh, Linux, and I'm very familiar with Debian. Uh, I like it probably second to my Fedora Workstation 31. So it's booting up now, and then we should get to a login screen here shortly. And hopefully it'll come up to 1920 by 1080 once we do log in. So, let me go ahead and enter the password, and uh, <clears throat> now it is coming up to what looks like will be a full 1920 by 1080 screen. We've got the connection established. There we are, and so we are uh, MX Linux uh, full screen, and um, take a look what we have just out on the desktop here. Desktop settings, uh, you know, create links, open the terminal. You've got the uh, updates in the corner here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on updates. It says I have 116 new updates available. So let me go ahead and click that and get that started. And then at some point I'll stop the video. All right, so let's hit upgrade button and enter the root password. Click authenticate. And here's the terminal and it's coming up now. It says, do you want to continue for 116 updates? Yes, I do. So I'm just going to go ahead and get this thing going, say yes, and let it launch. And as I said, this is going to take a while um, to update the system, and once we update the system, I'll reboot, I'll come back in, and, um, and then we'll log back in and see what we have available in MX19. So I'll wait a little bit longer here uh, as this uh, begins to download. It's getting all of the binaries now, and then uh, at some point it will begin the actual install process. So it fetched 328 megabytes in about 31 seconds. Now it's starting to execute and extracting and installing, and um, and so I'll go ahead and pause the video, and then we'll uh, we'll come back. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go out and restart this thing now that I've updated the system. Uh, made a couple of other changes, and I'll restart the uh, MX19 Linux, bring it up so we can uh, get in and see what we have. All right, so once again, I'm going to hit the Enter key here and let it uh, come up. 
looks like we're running 4.19.0 for a kernel. Um, and so uh, take a few seconds here to boot up and hopefully we'll come up to 1920 by 1080 again after the update. We have updated 100 and some uh, packages, I think it was 116. All right, so here we go, and uh, we should have a login screen. There we are, and let me just enter my password, and uh, should come up. There we are. So it will settle onto the background here momentarily. Connection is established. We've got the bar at the top, the panel. Here we are. So we've got a uh, much nicer, I think, uh, background than we had. And we should be getting in the upper right-hand corner, we should be getting our widget that comes out for time. And there we go. So it's 0213, Friday, November 22nd. Um, note here that we have an HDD of 11%, memory 10%, CPU 0% here. Uh, it's going up and down. So let's see what we have. Um, we've got Firefox web browser. And we have the file manager. We've got the uh, master sound uh, scroll bar there. We have no updates available. We just did our update. Uh, we can unmount uh, if we want to from here. Uh, we have a computer icon we can click on here. Uh, next, we have the Ethernet connectivity. And uh, next to that, we have um, what appears like a uh, paper clip. I'm not sure what that, quite what that is. But here I can click on that and I've got the menu. Okay, so we'll look at that momentarily. Over here I can select this and I can either log out, restart, shut down, suspend, or switch user. Okay, and so let me go ahead and cancel that. All right, so let's take a look at uh, what we have here. If I right click on the desktop, I have options for looking at the applications from here directly from the desktop. I can select properties. I can select the desktop settings if I wish. And from here I can get a whole host of backgrounds for wallpaper. And this is a bunch here. Um, get quite a selection to choose from. I, I, like, um, I like these. And uh, I think you will too. This is the backgrounds folder. Solid color here. Okay. Uh, and uh, I've selected uh, the one that you see here should be on our list. Uh, I don't see it right away. Well, I know it's here because I picked it from here. Um, there it is. And so that's the one I currently have loaded. All right. Let's click close. Let's get back in again. Arrange desktop icons. Share folder on your network. Uh, create a sim link from the desktop. Open root, uh, root Thunar. So Thunar is the file manager. You can open it from here. You can open the terminal from here. And so we have the terminal here as well. And so let me do a uname R, and we see that we're running 4.19.0-6-AMD64, 64-bit. I do a DF-H. You can see the file system uh, configuration here that I have set up. I just took the defaults for MX19. And then finally, if we do free memory to see what our free memory allocation is and, and usage, uh, we've got the total of uh, 4 gigs of RAM, and we're using uh, about 450 megabytes of RAM out of 4 gigabytes. That's not bad at all. The rest is free, and we do have the buffer over here as well. So let's click Exit and get out of this. Uh, I would um, tweak the terminal and, and make it better looking than that, but I'm not going to do that right now. I can create a, an empty file. I can create an empty folder. I can create a URL link here, I can create a launcher from the desktop, and I can open a new window. Not bad. All right, so let's go up here and select um, the menu, take a look at what we have. So we've got as options over here, all accessories, development games, graphics, internet, multimedia, MX tools, office settings, uh, and system. So under um, accessories, we have the application finder, Archive Manager, Bulk Rename, Catfish, File Search, Clip It, Conky Manager, Conky Toggle, a Feather Pad, Calculator, and Get GTK Hash. Under Developer, you've got, or Development, you've got Genie and the Icon Browser.
for games, I've got L Breakout 2, Mahjong, Peg E, and uh, Swell Foop. Well, not bad. Got a few games there for gamers. For graphics, we've got the GNU Image Manipulation Program, or GIMP. Um, probably version 10, if I had to guess. Let's go out and take a look at it. See what we have. It is version 2.10. And I'll let it open up. First time you open uh, GIMP, it has to set itself up. All right, so that's not bad. Uh, full screen mode here, and so looking good. Let's go ahead and quit this. Get back to the menu again. And so for graphics, we've got GScan 2 PDF, uh, LibreOffice Draw. So it looks like we had the LibreOffice Suite. I'm not keen on LibreOffice, as you know, if you've watched my previous videos. So I would probably um, I would probably leave LibreOffice here, and then install either OpenOffice or my favorite, which is FreeOffice. Nomax, uh, simple scan for scanning. Internet, we have Firefox web browser. So let's go up and take a look at uh, what version of Firefox we're running. And so when it comes up, Firefox is a little slow sometimes coming up anyway. It has nothing to do with the operating system, I don't think seems to be very responsive so far um, and so Firefox web browser here it is and let's go ahead and click the pancake and come down to help and about Firefox looks like we're running 70.0.164 bit MX Linux 1.0 very good that's the latest version I believe of Firefox alright so let's go ahead and um, let's see if we have sound coming from our um, browser here. Let's see if we have sound set up in the system. So I'll go up on my uh, my YouTube channel and pull up one of my videos. All right. So let me go ahead and log in. Okay. And uh, click there and go ahead and enter the password. Save it and bring up uh, five, the uh, YouTube channel. Let me get into my YouTube channel here. And I'll just go to one of my videos. Let me allow notifications here. And let's go to this one here. And let's see if we have sound. Okay, so we have sound. All right, and so let me go ahead and close this browser. All right, and uh, all right, so let's go ahead and go back out to internet, and we've got uh, GNOME PPP, HexChat, Thunderbird, Transmission. Uh, for multimedia, we have uh, Alsa Mixer. Asunder CD Ripper, Clementine, GMTP, GUV CView, uh, Pulse Audio Volume Control, uh, VLC Media Player, uh, and XF Burn. For MX Tools, we have the Bash Configuration, the CH Root Rescue Scan, uh, Command Line Interface, App Based Package Manager. That's interesting. Format USB for formatting USB drives our USB sticks, uh, iDevice mounter, live USB kernel updater, MX boot options, MX boot repair, MX cleanup, and MX codex installer. For Office, we do have the eBook reader, which is a part of Caliber. Uh, we have LibreOffice Base, LibreOffice Suite, Calc, Draw, Impress, uh, Math, LibreOffice Writer. Let's see what version of LibreOffice we have. We'll just let this come up and uh, we'll check it out. First time it installs uh, and loads, it, it takes a while as well. Okay, so let's um, take a look at File and Properties and let's cancel. I'm trying to um, 
get a less than full screen here. Um, actually, let's see if I can auto hide this. Um, transparent, expand, nope. Um, panel, it's not letting me auto hide that at all. Uh, oh, there we go. All right, and so uh, let's go up to help and go to uh, about LibreOffice. Looks like it's version 6.1.5.2, build uh, 1.6.1.5-3 for Debian. So that's very good. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and close this. And um, uh, let's see here. Go ahead and close this as well. All right, and get back to the uh, main screen. Okay, so now we were in Office, and I believe we were down to the Orage Calendar and Orage Global Time, uh, PDF Arranger, and uh, QPDF View. For settings, we've got About Me, Accessibility, Ad Blocker, the Adobe, um, Adobe Flash Player, ADSL, PPOE, that's the um, asynchronous DSL point-to-point uh, -point protocol over Ethernet configuration. Uh, application, we've got advanced network configuration, we've got appearance, we've got A, R&R, &R, Bluetooth adapters, and Bluetooth manager, okay? And then for system, we've got uh, the ADSL PPOE configuration, bulk rename, conky toggle, deconf editor, disk manager, disk usage analyzer, FAQ, G, Debbie package installer, that's for, for installing uh, Deb packages, uh, since this is a Debian-based uh, distro. Gparted, which is for uh, Partition Manager, and then Gsmart Control, okay? All right, so, um, and then we down here, we have our logout. We've got our switch users, lock screen, and all settings, all right? So let's get out of this, and um, let me get back into the terminal again. So I'm going to open the terminal here. And let's see if HTOP is installed. It is. All right. And so let's go up to full screen. Uh, if it'll let me do that f this way. Uh, I don't think it will. All right. So, yeah. All right. So we are 485 megs out of 4 gigs. 113 tasks, 127 threads, one running. Load average is very good. 0 0.02, 0 0.23, 0 0.17. This is a dual core system. So anything under 2 is great. Uptime of 12 minutes, uh, 52 seconds. Looking good, no swap being used currently. All right, so let me go ahead and close HTOP and, um, and get out of it if I can. Um, not sure, let's see if I can do an F10 to get out of it here. Yeah, let's go ahead and close the window and close window. All right, okay, so um, this has been a quick review of MX19 Linux based on Debian. Got a lot to choose from here, guys. Uh, looks very nice, I think. Uh, it's an operating system I could use as a daily driver, I think. Uh, and so uh, if you want to check it out, I'll put a link down below the video uh, so that you can go and download the ISO yourself and install it in your favorite hypervisor, test it out, and then install it on bare metal if you like. If you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up for me if you would. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already. And then click that bell off to the right-hand side. Um, so that you'll get notified every time I upload a video. And so this has been Data Pioneer with the Linux Unix Tech Channel. Hope you have a great day and take care. Bye-bye.